We are going to be looking at exploring graphs of systems of linear inequalities uh, in the key ideas here. And in, if you're in my class, you can pull out your study guide and start looking at this. Uh, in section 6.1, which we spent uh, many, many lessons on, we graphed one linear inequality and two variables on the coordinate plane, which is quite complicated process. Uh, in section 6.2 through 6.6, .6, which is the rest of the chapter, we'll be doing the same thing, except we will be graphing more than one inequality on the same coordinate plane. This is called a system of linear inequalities. So what you're going to find out here is that in order to graph a system of linear inequalities, it's exactly the same steps. You're just going to do it twice. So the steps were these. <clears throat> First of all, what you're going to do is both of the inequalities are graphed on the same coordinate plane. And if you don't know how to graph an inequality, look at the key ideas from section 6.1. Uh, the second step, not even a step, it's just understanding what the solutions are. The solution set is where the solution regions overlap. So we want to know the points or the values where um, both of the inequalities are satisfied or that represent solutions for both inequalities. Uh, finally, you want to apply the restrictions to the solution region. You may want to see the key ideas from 6.1 notes again. And lastly but not least, if the solution regions don't overlap at all, there's absolutely no solution. So here's an example really quickly to show you that's already done. If I was to graph y is greater than x, here's the boundary line y equals x, and then this is the solution. This is the region where y, all of these values, all of these points represent values where y is greater than x. Okay. And secondly, if I was to graph y is less than or equal to 5, that would look like this boundary line here. And this is the solution region, which I'm highlighting in pink, <clears throat> to y is less than or equal to 5. You'll notice that the boundary for y is less than or equal to 5 is a solid line uh, because <clears throat> it's or equal to, and the boundary for y is greater than x is a dotted line because the boundary is not equal. Uh, and finally, to understand the solution to the system, where they overlap, so this kind of purple region here, or the darker blue region here, those represent solutions to both inequalities. So that is your solution region. Those points uh, are solutions to both inequalities. So we're going to do two examples. I'm going to go relatively quickly. So what we'd first want to do is graph each of these. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, for the first one, I'm going to graph the boundary line. So 3y equals x plus 6. And that boundary line, if I substitute x equals 0, I would have 3y equals 6. And if I divide by 3, that gives me y equals 2. That's a point on the boundary. Okay, So we're first coming up with the boundary. And if I substitute y equals 0, I would have 3 times 0 equals x plus 6 which is 0 equals x plus 6. So if I subtract 6, I will have x equals negative 6. So there's the boundary line for that particular inequality. Uh, the next thing we want to do is to see which side of that boundary represents solution. So I'm going to see if 0, 0, so is, I'm just going to be placing 0, 0 into this inequality, uh, is 3 times 0 greater than 0 plus 6. So just substituting 0 for y and 0 for x to see if this side represents solution. So is 0 greater than 6? The answer to that is no. So what that means is that this side of the boundary does not represent solutions, so the other side of the boundary does represent solutions. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and start graphing the second. And you may want to pause this and try it on your own. Uh, that the more that you can do on your own and try on your own, the better. Uh, let's graph the second inequality. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. Come up with the boundary. So substitute x equals 0. So I have 2 times 0 plus y plus 4 equals 0, which is y plus 4 equals 0. And if I subtract 4, I get y equals negative 4. I'm just going to erase all this work here. Uh, secondly, if I substitute y equals 0, I will get 2x plus 0 plus 4 equals 0, or 2x plus 4 equals 0. And to solve, you first subtract 4. So we have 2x equals negative 4, and then divide by 2. So we will have x equals negative 2. And that's this point right here. Okay, so that's your boundary line. Again, let's go ahead and find out if 0, 0 is a solution. So I'm going to substitute 0 for x and 0 for y. So is 2 times 0 
plus 0 plus 4 greater than or equal to 0. So is 4 greater than or equal to 0? The answer to that is yes. If the answer to that is yes, then this side of the red boundary represents solutions to the second inequality. So let me go ahead and just erase this. It's not complicating the work. There we go. Uh, so last thing to do is to look at restrictions. First of all, the actual solution region is where they overlap. So these points here represent all of the solutions to both inequalities. So that's called your solution region. Uh, another thing to look at <clears throat> is, so two more things. This W represents whole numbers. So it means in the solution region, we're only looking at positives. So let me go ahead and deal with restrictions in the color green. So first of all, all of these negative quadrants, I'm just going to cross out. And whole numbers means just positive integers. So in the solution region, we're getting to the final answer here. Uh, in this solution region, only put dots on positive integers. So these represent all the possible solutions given the restrictions. And the final thing to do, uh, you may want to see if you, you notice anything, has to do with the boundaries. And the boundary here means that the blue boundary is going to be an actual dotted line. So the final answer to this particular solution, or the solution region, would look like this. So these here, these green dots, represent all the solutions to this particular system of inequalities. All right, so let's go ahead and start looking at the next one. And this will be the last one that we do. Again, you may want to pause this and try it on your own at some point in time. Uh, we're going to first of all do these each in different colors. So I'm going to substitute. I'm going to come up with the boundary for y is equal to negative 2x. So if I substitute x equals 0, I'll have y equals negative 2 times 0, which is 0. It's this point here. And if I substitute y equals 0, I'll have 0 equals negative 2x. And if I divide by negative 2, this is a unique case where the intercept is the same point. So in this case, we are going to choose a different point to come up with another uh, point on the boundary line. I'm going to choose x equals 1. So if I substitute x equals 1 into here, I'll have y equals, sorry, substitute it into here, I'll have y equals negative 2 times 1, which is y equals negative 2. So that is not the intercept. That is not this point here. Because we chose x equals 1, that represents when x equals 1, y is negative 2. So that's this point here. So that's that particular boundary line. Now the interesting thing in this particular case is we want to know which side represents solutions, but the point 0, 0 is not on either side of the particular uh, boundary line. So let's just choose a point. I'm going to choose 1, 1. So I'm going to chest out that point. I'm going to see is, if I substitute 1 in for y and 1 in for x, we'll see if it's a solution, is 1 greater than or equal to negative 2 times 1. So is 1 greater than or equal to negative 2? The answer there is yes. So that means that this side of that boundary line, because it's the yes side, represents all the solutions to that inequality. So all of these points over here are where y is greater than or equal to negative 2x. Uh, the next boundary line, so we're graphing two inequalities. Again, we need two boundaries. Uh, let's go ahead and substitute x equals 0. So we'd have negative 3 equals negative y. And if we divide by the coefficient negative 1, we'll have positive y equals positive 3. So that's this point here. And again, if you're not following the algebra, maybe pause this and look at it a little bit more carefully. If I substitute y equals 0, I'll have negative 3 equals x minus 0, which is negative 3 equals x. So that's this point here. Okay, so that boundary line would look something like this. In this case, you are more than welcome to use 0, 0 because it's on one side of the boundary. We're going to see is, I'm going to substitute 0 in for x and 0 for y, is negative 3 less than 0 minus 0. Is negative 3 less than 0? The answer to that is yes, absolutely. So this side, where I chose my test point, because it's the yes side, uh, that side of the red boundary line represents your solution. So you can see where these overlap. Uh, because there's no restrictions as far as whole numbers, etc. go, uh, these, this is your solution region where it overlaps. 
However, you might notice one other thing. Again, we have to look at the boundaries uh, in this particular case, which means look at the inequality sign. In this particular case, the red boundary line is going to be dotted. So I'm just going to erase it and make that red boundary line a dotted line. Okay, And all of these points where I've uh, shaded in black, those represent points that satisfy each of the inequalities. And that is systems of linear inequalities.